Hi there. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you're having a good day, and I hope you're able to have a relaxing Christmas and New Year. Uh, I have a quick video to announce that the latest version of Engine Crane is now available on Race Department and my website. You can find a link to both of those in the video description below. Uh, in this update, there's a few changes. Uh, one is to automatically update the AI shift points when you do an engine swap. The other is to update the max clutch torque automatically after a swap. Uh, a lot of the work I've been doing has been trying to get the formula beta uh, from Virtual Racing Cars, the mod released at the end of last year, working. So you can do engine swaps with that now. Uh, and there's a bunch of other small changes as well to stop the app exiting uh, when certain error conditions occur. Uh, and in some circumstances it now deletes uh, any directories that get created when a swap fails. If you enjoy Engine Crane and would like to be kept up to date with future updates or would like to support what I'm doing, consider subscribing to the channel and liking any of the content you enjoy. Uh, for those of you who would like a more in-depth look at the latest changes, uh, here's a little devlog style rundown for you. First up, Engine Crane will now update the max torque for the clutch. So what is that value? So if we take a look in a base Assetto Course car, come into the data folder. Um, so here's all the data for the file in drivetrain.ini. Uh, down here, there's a clutch max torque setting. Now for the base Assetto Course cars, these are all set manually. So they're set to a value. This is higher than the peak torque of the engine. Um, but in the case of swapping engines, it is possible for you to create an engine that is higher than the torque value that was set originally for the car. An example of this can be found here. So here's a, a quick swap I'd done earlier. Uh, and we can see that the max torque output is 420 Newton meters. But if we look at the value inside this drivetrain.ini, we can see that this value hasn't been updated. So this is still 300. What we've now got in engine crane, we run it. So if we try this out with the latest version, and we check out the value inside this drivetrain.ini, we can see that it automatically gets updated to a value that will be greater than the peak torque value of the engine. Another small update is uh, to the way that the AI cars uh, have their shift points set. Um, so if we come into the base car again, we can see again inside drivetrain.ini, right at the bottom in this case, there's an auto shifter value. Now this is already updated by Engine Crane to values that will that should work fairly well for the um, car and the engine that you've swapped into it. It's a bit rough around the edges at the minute, it needs a bit of work, but it, it does update the values. Um, what isn't getting updated as part of that is this is other file ai.ini, which also defines uh, some shift points, uh, but this time for the AI cars driving around. So if you were doing races against um, other cars that you've engine swapped, they'll all be using the shift points of the old engine rather than the engine that you've swapped in. So we can see in a engine swapped car from an older version, we go to the folder, we go to drivetrain.ini and look at ai.ini. We can see that there's a mismatch between the two. So in the drivetrain.ini file, you can see that we've updated the auto shifter points, but they don't get updated in the AI file. In the latest version of Engine Crane, those will now match up. So when you go to your drivetrain, that will match up with the value that gets set for the AI. The back end of last year, uh, VRC released a new uh, Formula Beta car, which is essentially a GP2 car from 2008. Um, this is one of the things that I wanted to have a little play around with, try to engine swap with it, and immediately I was met with an error. <laughs> it just didn't work at all. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging into it. 
There's a couple of things that separate the data files inside here to some of the other cards that I've been working on so far. So let's have a little dive into that. So we go into the data folder again. Uh, it turns out the issue that was preventing this swap from working correctly was inside the files which define the torque of the engine. Uh, so they will be power.lut generally. Uh, you can find out which one is relevant. Sometimes there's many LUT files inside a, a data directory. You go to engine.ini. Inside here, there will be a reference to the power curve uh, LUT file or lookup table file. So we're looking for power.lut. We open that up. What we'll see here is there's two things that previously Engine Crane couldn't handle. One is these comments at the top of the file. So um, lines that are preceded by a semicolon uh, indicate that it's a comment, so it shouldn't be read as data. So previously, Edge and Crane was just assuming that these look files would only contain the values uh, that we're looking up, and so it would have come across these lines and immediately throw up and not work. Um, so I've updated the parser for the look files so they can now parse comments, um, they just get disregarded. Uh, the other thing that is different about Formula Beta to other cars that I've worked on is that the values in here are stored as floating point numbers or um, you know, with decimals, real numbers. Um, all the other files I come across were using two integer values. So another issue was that it was trying to parse these as integers and that also was throwing errors and not working correctly. Um, so for anyone who's unfamiliar, this lookup table defines how much torque an engine has at a given RPM. So for example, plugging here at 3000 RPM, the engine outputs 279 Newton meters of torque. Something that can catch you out on this is that this is only the torque generated from the engine running naturally aspirated. This doesn't include turbo. Turbo is done separately. I can go into that into another in another video if uh, anyone is interested. So a quick update to parse these um, as floats as well as integers. We've got that working and that seems to have solved all the problems. Nothing else complicated about it. And you can now successfully engine swap the Formula Beta. Just to prove that what I'm saying is true, we can spin it up. And there we go, that's now successful. As for the rest of the changes in this release, uh, they're just minor internal refactorings and sorting out issues which would otherwise have made the application crash. Um, and just exit without warning. Um, so it should do that less frequently. There's definitely still some areas that I need to go through and tidy up, um, but this is at least an improvement over what was there before. So that's everything. I uh, hope you enjoy the latest update. Uh, feel free to play around with it. Uh, give me any feedback, any issues you find, let me know, uh, and I'll try and get to the bottom of them. Uh, and if you have any suggestions of uh, things to add to it again let me know and i'll uh, add them to my list of stuff to do all that's left to say is have a good day uh, if you enjoyed this consider liking the video and if you'd like to see more of this subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next one